Good morning and welcome to Elephant Roses. My name is Katie. Um, today I'm going to go through some of my crochet and knitting and sewing projects I've been working on. So today is a fiber day. So hopefully you enjoy this um, vlog. Please leave me a like and a comment. Um, and definitely let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see. I've done some baking and some Azure Standard Hauls and now second um, fiber one. So let's start with this guy. He's the big one. Um, so this one, I'm going to look at my notes. This is the Camelot Crossing throw pattern. Um, it's by Kim Guzman. Um, it's a stitch pattern that's 12 stitches with a one repeat um, for seven rows. Um, it measures the pattern measures four inches after you're done with the repeat. The original throw is only 44 by 50 inches. So this was a Christmas present for my son. I still have all the ends of weaving. I took her, um, uh, the pattern as far as it being a four inch repeat. And I determined how big to make mine. Mine is massive. <laughs> um, the young man this was crocheted for so as you can tell and it still goes I mean the ends are even in the shot um it um my son is six foot four so um pretty tall guy he's got a health condition so he doesn't move around a lot so but he can't handle heavy blankets and stuff so that's why I thought this was a perfect pattern for him I use Karen uh, a Karen cake in the shark colorway um, I can drop down in the description box more information about the yarn if you're interested. But it's a really pretty repeat, so it goes charcoal. And then for the border, I use just a Karen dark black um, yarn. So it's all acrylic, easy to wash. I still have lots of ends to weave in. So every time I can steal this from him, I'm weaving in ends. Um, he can even wait for me to finish weaving in ends. He thinks this is the greatest. Um, lengthwise, I mean, this thing is big. Um, I can measure it and put the measurements of mine down below. But this is a great pattern. You can just expand it. So um, I'm sure Kim wasn't thinking somebody would make a throw this big, <laughs> but it worked out really good for my family because it was the right size. So it was what um, was needed at the time. And so that's what I did. Um, I The pattern was great. Um, no issues, no problems. Um, the only thing that I wish is that on the edges, and I can, um, hopefully that zooms in. The, the pattern doesn't do a full repeat. Like it would have been nice if it stopped here. Instead, it's the pattern is cut off on the edges, but that's okay. It's nothing major. It just, when I went to put the edging on, it would have been so much crisper and easier if it would have had a solid pattern repeat at the edge instead of a half, um, halfway through a motif. So, but other than that, it was a great pattern. Um, thank you, Kim, for the wonderful free pattern. It is a free pattern on her blog, so definitely check it out. She's got a lot of great patterns on there, and it was no problems, no fuss, no muss. It was great. Um, as a crocheter, it's great when you get those patterns. Now to my um, project <laughs> that's still a work in progress. It's my crochet project. I've been working on this a very long time. I don't even want to admit how long. This is the Drops Sweet Mint Cardigan pattern. I fell in love with this motif. I thought that was just gorgeous. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, I love this pattern on the top. I just thought it was gorgeous. That is the only part of this pattern that actually functioned and worked. I would not recommend this pattern for a beginner. If you're an intermediate to an advanced crocheteist, yes. And the reason is, is you have to, all the way through, you can't follow, you can follow the pattern and then you got to stop and think, wait a minute, is this going to work? So like on this stretch a lace here um it says that do, 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 up here because you're going from the top down so you're working this row first and then going that way so you're supposed to skip one stitch 
but you can't skip just one stitch in this section um, w between this point and this point. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to try and do this a little differently. Um, in there, you can't skip just one stitch. You have to skip two. And the reason is, is that if you skip, if you only skip one, instead of your work looking like this, all of a sudden you start going like this and it gets wider and wider and you'll end up ripping all the way back going, what did I do wrong? And it took me a little bit to figure it out. Um, my gauge was spot on, so I know I'm not knitting too tight, too loose, anything like that. It was spot on. Um, next issue is the collar. Um, finished neckline on this is just an absolute labor of love. There's just no nice way to say it. I've crocheted my whole life. I was taught by my great grandmother. I'm a fifth generation crocheteist, knitter, sewist, all of that. Um, I'm Danish American, so this is what you grow up doing. I don't remember never crocheting because they had me doing it when I was probably a preschooler. Um, literally, I remember um, my grandfather whittled me a big wooden crochet hook. I wish I still had it. Um, I'm not sure what happened to it over time, but I still remember it. He whittled me one that was my little kid hand size. And it was just the perfect little compact thing. It was like the coolest thing ever. I still remember that as an adult. Um, so this neckline, I had to rip out over six times. I ripped it out, tried to put in my own version of a neckline because I couldn't make it work. And finally, what I ended up doing was I followed their pattern, but I didn't do it the way they said, which is you start here, you count the stitches, go all the way around to the other side, and then back again. What I ended up doing was I counted the number of stitches in on this side and put a marker. Then I went over here, counted, put the mark, first marker in, and then I went to the second marker on both sides, then the third. And what you're gonna discover in the back, the number of stitches between your final two stitch markers is not the number of stitches they say. You can't even fit the final four, it's supposed to be five stitch repeat here, there's supposed to be five stitches. There's supposed to be five of these repeats. There's, you do it five times from the beginning to here. You're supposed to. I only got four of the repeats in because there wasn't room between this point and this point to put another one in on each side. There's supposed to be twice as many stitches between these two points even. And it, yeah, that's how I ended up in the end getting it to work. And it looks great now. But yeah, it was, um, that was not fun. <laughs> and um, the other thing that I'm dealing with right now is that I'm finishing up the sleeve. So I've got one sleeve almost done. Um, it's a very wide sleeve. Um, and so I tapered mine after the elbow. So um, mine goes to here up. My elbow hits right about there and in here. So then I tapered it. And the final edge of the sleeve, there is no directions on what to do for the cuff at all. So um, I'm going to design something. But um, <laughs> I had more than one friend say, just frog it, give it up. It's never going to work. And I actually got it to work. Um, I'm very, very proud of it. Um, it, uh, it definitely was a labor of love. Um, I can pop in more pictures of it too, but um, yeah, that's the fun of it. So it really, it's a beautiful cardigan. Um, the lace work is just gorgeous. Um, just love that, but yeah, it was absolutely a labor of love. <laughs> um, I'm not wanting to, I, if something challenges me, I'm definitely one that I will push through. I'll figure out how to work with it. I'll do whatever it takes because once I like something I and I put time and effort into it, um, that's something I want. Um, knitting. So um, I do have a finished object and um, hopefully next time I can show you my newest cast on. But um, this is the Novice Cardigan. It still needs its buttons by um, oh, 
explain why it doesn't have its buttons yet. Um, it is finished. Um, I have a warning. Um, I gave it a white washing and a blocking. Um, so I was, this is my first cardigan in the round. I've never, this is my first knitted object in the round. Um, never done that ever. <laughs> and I've been knitting as long as I've been crocheting. Um, I was always taught that you make all the pieces and then you seam them all together. Uh, I never got around to doing it. Um, this was my first project. Um, and this was just phenomenal pattern. Um, kudos to Petite Knit um, and all the test knitters. This was just phenomenal. This thing just knitted up like a dream. So I was always raised when you make a sweater or a cardigan or anything like that. Before you weave in the ends, after you do your... I never do a hard block. I always do a light block. It gets a nice wash in the sink with woolite, and I don't use any fancy soaps or anything like that. Always woolite. If I can't find woolite, then it gets baby um, soap. Um, sounds strange. That's how I was raised. Um, <laughs> if you can't find the woolite, go grab the baby soap because it's nice and gentle. It's not harsh. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that, but in this case, it got a nice bath in more light. And um, I was worried. This is whole scarn, super soft, so that it comes with the spinning oil on it. So you knit with the yarn, with the oil and everything still in it. I'm sure you could um, put it on a swift and you know tie it and wash all the yarn and then cake it up and do it that way. I did. I just left it in the cakes that came in and I knitted it. I held it double. This is the mohair edition of the cardigan. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it knit up just wonderfully. I mean, and then it just, after I gave it its bath and I could feel it in the water. You could feel the oils come out of it because the yarn was just blooming in your fingers and it was feeling softer and softer. And so I just kept washing it, and it just got soft. It got, it's not like super soft, you know, it's wool. It's still got the little, you know, coarse texture to it, which is normal, but for a wool, it's pretty soft. Um, I was really surprised it said it would be super soft. Um, I think over time, as you wear it, and it starts, you know, wool over time will sometimes just kind of soften more and more as you wear it, and I think that's gonna be the case with this one. Um, so after you do a light blocking, I was always raised that then you wear it. Um, let the whole thing just relax. Um, let the yarn just go where it wants. Um, let it be, you know, it's happy self. <laughs> and then after you do that, you wear it a couple of times. Let it relax. Let it be a happy sweater. And then um, you put the buttons on your cardigan. And then on the inside of the button band, um, to keep it from stretching out and also to hide that edge, you put in grain ribbon. So in this case, this is what it's gonna look like on the inside edge. I know it's kind of turquoise, but there's um, purple flowers. If you can look right there. Um, it's really hard to get much choice. So this is already cut and ready to go. So this week I'll sit down and I'll sew that in to the inside of the button band on both sides. And I'll put the buttons on as well. Um, and then next time I sh I'll show you the finish, uh, with the buttons. Um, the buttons are being recycled off of my favorite cardigan. Um, my favorite cardigan finally just gave up life. The sleeve after I washed it the last time just completely disintegrated. So I'm recycling as much off that, yeah, off that cardigan as I can, including buttons. So they're my favorite buttons. So, um, yeah it'll be nice but this is just I did a, a balloon sleeve um, I don't remember what her pattern called for but I just did a big wide sleeve because I lay I like to layer clothes so I like a big wide sleeve um, and then I just did the cuff and this pattern was just wonderful it, I um, bought the Friday tee which I've cast on never did an Italian bind on um, a tally cast on, not bind off. And um, that collar was a labor of love. Oh my gosh. That took 
that had a learning curve, but I like it. She walks you through it. She has videos to teach you how to do these skills. Yes, she's speaking in Danish, but the captions are down below. For me, I understand a lot of Danish. I understand it more than I speak it, um, being Danish American. Um, so especially like knitting terms and it just, it just reminds me of my great grandmother. Um, she was Danish, so she's a lot of times, I'm, those are memories I have as a child. I was very blessed. I got to be taught by her and um, her version of teaching me by the time I was born, she had had a stroke. So her dominant left hand didn't work the greatest. So I was her left hand. So that's the reason I got taught when I was so little, I think. Looking back, I think that was the reason. She would have me sit on her lap and she would have, she would tell me how to do the stitches and her left hand didn't work the greatest, but her right hand was in there with me. So I think, I think I was her left hand as an adult looking back, but I think it's still a great memory with her. Um, she was just an amazing lady and um, I've got a throw I'm currently um, designed in my next fiber video I'll share with you. Hopefully it'll be ready by that point. Um, I'm writing the pattern and I'm going to be having that pattern for sale, but the throw is named Marie after her. Um, and uh, in the pattern, you'll get to see a picture of her too um, on her wedding day. She was an amazing lady. She was a seamstress for almost 70 years. So um, yeah, she was, a, she was an amazing, amazing lady and I can tell stories forever about her, but that's my memory as a child is sitting on her lap and her talking in Danish and slash English because it was a combination. And so when I watch Petit Ned's videos, that's what it reminds me of is you know, her, so the terms to me just click in my head. I'm watching her hands and I don't even know the subtitles up. I'm just listening to her in Danish and watching going, oh yeah, I remember doing this. <laughs> so the Friday sweater, I'm really using her videos because that really is helping with the, there's lots of new terminology. I've never stitches, you know, like an Italian cast on. I've never done that. So it's nice to learn new skills after you've been a knitter for so long. So um, I'll definitely share that the next time I'll have more progress on that sweater. So, but highly recommend this. If you're wondering if Holstgarn would work good, yes, I held a double on the mohair edition of the sweater. Um, it worked phenomenal. I'm definitely going to make another one of these. Um, I'm already looking for colors on Holstgarn Super Soft. I think this is just fabulous yarn. I loved it. Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of years of wear out of this. So, Definitely highly recommend that. And again, I'll pop pictures up above of what it looks like on a hanger so it's easier to tell. And I'll do the same with the pink one too. So final object um, to share with you is um, the frock coat, which is Berta style from March 2019. Um, this is, um, I shared in my last fiber video, um, the plans for it, I had it cut out, it was ready to go. It's almost done. Um, I have to finish a couple of things. Um, I have to finish top stitching. So like my sleeves currently, <laughs> they're like this. So I have to do the final stitches, which um, I haven't gotten to yet. Um, the months of November, December, and January are very, very busy with the holidays. Plus my job is super busy that time of year. So that's when I really struggled to get anything done. I know most people get a lot of stuff done in the winter. Winter is really hard for me. So spring through fall is when I get most of my projects done. So coming up, you'll see a lot more projects um, seem like they just fly off the needles or the sewing machine because I've got more hours to work. So um, I work full time um, and right now I work a lot of overtime. So, um, so this is the bell sleeve. I thought this was really pretty um, and I'm going to pop in pictures because I know it's really hard to tell when people are holding things up. Um, so uh, I had a funny, um, uh, as you can tell, the sleeve still made the top stitching. I still have to do the hem. The hem isn't done. Um, this is a wool book clay knit. It called for a woven. Um, I. I've done this for years. Um, if it's a woven pattern, I size up one size and then I just use a, a knit fabric and then I tailor it to fit me. Um, 
and that's what I did in this case. Um, so this is a woeful clay from my girl Charlie Fabric. Phenomenal fabric. Absolutely, positively fabulous fabric. I bought it on Markdown a year ago, and I'm so glad I did because it is just really sweet. And it's going to last a really long time. It's I had never worked with a wool boucle, especially a knit wool boucle. And this worked out just phenomenal. The lining is this super soft material. Um, I don't know what it is. I got it on Remnant. There was two yards of it. I made it work for the entire lining. Um, it was a challenge, but I did it. <laughs> I did not follow the cutout lines at all. I, I'm one of those that I never follow the cutting because I just think sometimes it wastes fabric and I don't want to waste fabric because it's expensive. So um, I will stretch my material out. I'll take the pattern pieces and I'm looking at green lines and everything and making sure and um, uh, there's one of the YouTubers, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's really good at doing that too. It's always funny to see what she can push out of just like the small scrap of yarn, of fiber, not um, uh, fabric. Um, sorry, wrong words. Um, so any issues? Um, the only tricky part um, is right here with the pocket. And I'm going to try and show you. So the pocket is right there. Um, and I know it's really hard to tell with almost charcoal fabric but there is when you come down um and i'll pop in a picture so you can see it a lot better there's a curve that you have to go around um don't follow the directions if you make this coat is my advice it's going to tell you to assemble the pocket and attach it everything my advice is come down this seam all the way down to the curve Make that first curve, stop, backstitch, just leave it there. Then assemble your pocket, then um, finish attaching this panel after the pocket's done at that point. That'll help you as, uh, put this in the correct position because otherwise you're going to, I had to rip it out twice before I finally figured out what I was doing wrong because it the markings, at least on my version of the pattern, and if you buy that online, it might be different, but my marks weren't where they were supposed to be. Another thing is it just lets this flop around. I don't like that. So I'm going to tack mine down. Um, I'm going to do some hand stitching before I top stitch um, so that this can be tacked down. Um, the inside of my pocket bag, um, I did not, I never, um, uh, this is one of my trademarks. I do where people are gonna see the, the pocket, like when I stick my hand in, you're gonna see the fabric match exactly with the outside garment. But when you go inside the pocket bag, you're gonna find that I, even on knits, I use a woven pocket bag. Um, it's my trademark. Why? Because knit pockets stretch out, they, they get holes in them easier, etc. So I always ha take my scrap fabric, in this case it's a, um, uh, cotton ticking. I love cotton ticking for pockets. It's just like my thing. <laughs> um, pockets. So um, that was the only thing that I ran into with issues on the pattern. Um, I still have to do the hem obviously. Um, so and then I, the bell sleeves. This was just a breeze. Um, you would think it'd be more complicated. It really wasn't. <laughs> it was so easy. It was um, uh, I've done bell sleeves before where they had to cut pieces out and everything and then you stitch them together the specific way. This was simply just a rectangle. They just had me do a rectangle <laughs> and, and gather it and voila. And um, I know right now it doesn't look very good because the lighting's popping out the bottom, but it does look, you know, um, once I put the top stitching in, it's going to be phenomenal. So I'll share more details on this when I finish it. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave me a like and comment below. Let me know what type of videos you'd like to see in the future. I'm glad to put those together for you. Um, I can do pretty much any handicraft except for tatting. Um, I never learned. Um, I did not have the patience as a child, so I did not learn tatting, um, which I'm very sad about. Um, 
I've gotten to see some of the most beautiful things that the women in my family tatted and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So that's on my bucket list to learn as an adult is sit down and learn how to tat. Um, so that's on my goal. But thank you for coming to visit and um, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please definitely leave me a comment below if you're what you like to do. Do you like to crochet, knit, sew, um, and what type of videos you like to see? So thank you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.